Hello everybody and welcome to another Twilight Zone review. Today it is Season 4, Episode 1, In His Image, written by Charles Beaumont and starring George Grizzard as Alan Talbot and Walter Ryder and Gail Coby as Jessica. Now one thing I have to note about Season 4 is that there are less episodes in this season, there are only 18. However, the episodes are an hour long, up from the half hour that we're used to. And if I remember correctly throughout the season, some episodes will really succeed in this format and others really will not. So as for this episode in his image, I think it's really good overall and shows what the hour format can do. And it features two very good performances and it's just a nice start to the season with a few little issues here and there. So we start our episode in a train station with a man who's not yet named. And this is somewhat significant. And he's just waiting for a train. And this lady comes up to him and starts bothering him. She's definitely very overbearing. And he just says, you know, please leave me alone. When she doesn't, he gets really mad. And he starts kind of hearing these noises in his head. They sound kind of like mechanical noises or robot noises, which will be significant later on. And he gets so upset that he actually throws this woman in front of the chain in front of the train, excuse me. And this is one of the more shocking openings of Twilight Zone, I would say. It's it's a good setup for the rest of the episode. So we go to the next scene, and we learn our main character's name is Alan, and we're wondering, is this the same guy that did that? He seems very different. And we find out he's engaged to a woman named Jessica, who we're introduced to here. And we find out that um, they haven't known each other that long. And Alan just seems confused about certain little things like the time. But you can tell that Jessica is really, really into him, which will come into play later on as well. So then we get Jessica and Alan in a car. And Alan is taking her back, you know, to the town where he thinks he grew up in anyway. And Alan has a dream and he's shouting a name Walter. But when Jessica questions him on it, he says, I don't know anyone named Walter. Now this episode being an hour long does have some scenes that extend just a little bit, but in this episode I feel they work because they help develop the relationship between the two lead characters, and I think both actors have good chemistry, so that helps out quite a bit. So I was fine with this. So Alan's taking Jessica around to see things from, you know, when he was younger that he remembers. And there's a building he doesn't remember. The restaurant's not in the right place. He doesn't recognize the townspeople. But everything really comes to a head when he goes to the home where he lives with his aunt. Only his aunt doesn't answer the door. There's a man there. And he says, you got the wrong house. You know, I've lived here for a long time. So, you know, Alan's really confused now. He doesn't know what to do. So he says he's going to go to uh, the authorities on this. Nothing's as he remembers it. And then we find out through a, a, a younger lady that Alan's aunt, you know, has been passed away for quite some time. And Alan thinks he might be out of his mind. So he goes to the cemetery to see if things are how he remembers there. And what we learn from an officer there is that you know, the the officer from the past that Alan used to know is also gone. So now we're really wondering what's going on, which leads us to a well-done scene with Alan and Jessica. And they're driving again, trying to figure out Alan's really confused at this point. And we really sympathize with this character. So it, it's well done. And Alan starts hearing these voices, and we start getting the mechanical noises again. So this guy come. Uh, you know, appears to be completely out of it now. So he tells Jessica to go away to run as she's trying to help him. She does get away, and Alan moves out into the street and almost gets hit, actually, in a scene that looked pretty realistic, I thought. And what's significant about this is that he now looks at his arm to make sure he's okay, except that he has lost some skin. And we find out that there are some kind of mechanical parts underneath uh, that look kind of robotic. So we go to the second half of the episode, which is set up well, and Alan is in a hotel, and he gets a call from Jessica, who's very worried about him, and Alan is touched that she still cares after the way he treated her earlier. And I have to say, Gail Kobe and George Grizzard do nice work in this scene. You can tell they actually really care about what happens to each other. It's a very well-acted scene in an episode that's pretty well-acted all the way around. So, Alan is interested, though, in something else. He wants to find out who this Walter Ryder is. So, he looks it up in the phone book. That's nothing supernatural about that, but that's pretty logical. 
So uh, Alan goes to Walter's home and he runs into Walter. And here's the twist of the episode. They look exactly alike, except for the clothes that they're wearing. So then we get some explanation, and some of these scenes did feel just a little padded, but they're okay overall. So Walter explains that Alan's only eight years old and that he created him because he wanted to create a duplicate of himself. Of course, Alan denies this. He says, I eat, I sleep. This is impossible. And Walter explains, you know, you're an artificial man, not a robot. They don't really totally go into what the difference is, but it's fine. So Walter is going to prove it to Alan. He takes him to the invention room, which looks pretty cool, where he was created, you know, created. And he shows Alan some more clones that look just the same. And... He explains that he used his own experience and knowledge, you know, when he created Alan, which explains why Alan has all these memories, but the name behind him isn't correct. Then he also explains that he changed certain facts and attributes to make, you know, the, the person more well-rounded, and that his vision was to create a perfect version of himself. The only problem is that something obviously went wrong somewhere along the way, because Alan attacked Walter and almost killed him, and then just ran off. So this explains what we saw at the beginning of the episode. So this is all well done. There, there's not too many holes here. It seems to hold up pretty well. Now Alan brings up Jessica, and Walter says, I'm sorry about that, but there's nothing I can do. So Alan wants him to create another clone. I wasn't 100% sure this part was a little sketchy. Does he want an even better version? I'm not really sure because they basically get interrupted by a fight as Walter does not leave. They just start fighting, which did kind of come out of nowhere just a little bit. And the thing is, the fight is pretty convincing, but we don't actually see who wins. Although I think it's pretty easy to figure out being Twilight Zone from the 1960s. So anyway, we go to the next scene. And we, <clears throat> excuse me, we go back to Jessica, who answers the door, and she tells Alan to come in, but we're not really sure if it's Alan or not. He reassures her that everything will be okay, and she accepts this pretty easily. She says, just promise me someday you'll explain. He says he will, and I think we're pretty sure this is Walter. I mean, I don't think the show would go that dark to make it, you know, a psychotic <laughs> Alan, although that would have been interesting. So anyway, we are confirmed. We go back to the lab, and we see we know that it's Alan who's destroyed on the ground. So Walter actually takes over, and he gets the girl. So a happy ending for Walter, not too happy of an ending for Alan. But overall, this episode does a lot of good things. Now, there are a few scenes that are slightly padded with the hour format, but I don't think a half hour really would have done this episode justice. So overall, I'm satisfied within his image, which is a nice start to season four, that I give a four out of five. Definitely an episode worth watching, and I would say don't let the hour length deter you. It seems as though a lot of people don't really know too much about the hour-long episodes, but this one's very good. So four out of five for in his image, I highly recommend it. And as always, thank you very much for watching.